But first, we check back in with Paris Schutz, who's co-anchoring tonight from Marquette Park in the Chicago Lawn Community on the city's southwest side. Hey, Paris. Hey, Brandis. Yeah, and I'm joined now with Rami Nashashibi, who is the executive director of Iman, and that is the Inner City Muslim Action Network, which runs a wide variety of programs here in Chicago Lawn and across the south side. Welcome back to Chicago tonight. Good to see you again. Thanks. So we mentioned that uh, this community is reporting the third highest amount of COVID-19 cases. What is your biggest concern as it relates to Chicago Lawn and Marquette Park? You know that not only uh, the high number of COVID-19 uh, cases, but even as we increase the testing, that we will continue to see uh, a, a disproportionate number of folks who are testing positive. That compounded with unemployment, compounded with kind of summer months that also uh, have historically you know, these kind of uh, periods of violence and the lack of real kind of comprehensive opportunities for housing uh, that create a real challenge for a lot of us who are on the ground. And, and let's break that down a little bit. So first with the testing, your organization is starting to do COVID-19 testing. Explain to me how that's gonna work. So uh, currently our testing has been really for a smaller group of our first kind of frontline workers, those who are working with our reentry population, those who are in the clinic, and now we're expanding it to uh, next week, twice a week, we'll start off uh, with testing for the larger community on Tuesdays and Fridays. We're going to have a drive through and a walk, uh, walk up. Um, and you know, these are self-administered tests. We will be able to oversee it with our medical staff. Results will come back in two or three days. Uh, obviously we'll try to make sure that those who are testing with us get brought into the comprehensive network of holistic care. Uh, and then we'll get back to folks and then we'll try to do uh, the reasonable amount of contact tracing, which is also a big challenge in these type of communities, partly because of the housing, uh, you know, is not, you have already families that are living in dense kind of apartments and smaller units with one another. And you have people who simply don't have the privilege to stay away from any kind of uh, access to menial jobs that they're using quite frankly just to stay alive right so contact tracing is going to be a big challenge a big challenge that we've heard from multiple people today is making the rent in june uh, the southwest development uh, or organizing project telling me they expect as many as half of renters here will not have enough money to make june rent can you yeah, put that I'm, in the perspective for us well you know i'll give you another kind of just perspective it's it's rent for a lot of families it's the equation of rent food or medicine and um you know, uh, we've distributed probably right now over 7,000 care packages uh, to lines that uh, line up around the block. And a lot of those families, quite frankly, don't have the resources to buy those kind of goods, supplies and groceries, let alone to be able to make the rent. So uh, we know that in some cases there are, uh, you know, those landlords who are trying to provide as much clemency as possible, but at a, at a certain point, uh, those challenges are going to become really acute for us and we have to take into consideration larger long-term systematic kind of intervention. What, what would those look like? I, I think part of it is, you know, really creating not, no, not only more affordable housing opportunities, but really kind of pathways to jobs, more uh, systematic, you know, forms of holistic intervention that uh, get beyond some of the immediate anxieties and concerns. A lot of organizations like ours have been doing the rapid response, which is critical and which is important. But we need to also use this moment to get at what Martin Luther King was saying in spaces like this are the triple barriers for ghettos like the neighborhoods that he was confronting in the 60s when he came to Chicago, poverty, race, and human misery, as he called it. And those solutions have to be much more systematic and much more bold and you know have to be on the level of Marshall Plan level interventions. We have to really pour significant economic development into neighborhoods that have historically not had that to create more meaningful opportunities. And part of what you do to create uh, opportunities is train ex-offenders when they come out for jobs, give them job skills. How difficult is that now, given that unemployment in general is so high? Well, you know, the unemployment rate has already been skyrocketing or in, in many of the neighborhoods that we've been working in, you know, 20, 30% unemployment rates. And of course, now we're all bracing for the consequences of COVID-19. Again, we're, we are all bracing for the short-term pain, hoping that we can build up enough infrastructure to have some time of long-term relief. And the relief is gonna come when 
we are we actually give the type of returning citizens the populations that we're working with young 18 to 25 year olds the skill sets to succeed in industries that still have a fighting chance i mean we still even uh in this post covid 19 moment we're hoping and we're all praying for a type of economic rebound that will still allow us to see development and construction projects go on we're still uh, there are areas for employment in this economy but we have to be very aggressive and we have to demand that the populations that typically are left out get an opportunity all right rami nashashibi executive director of iman thank you for joining us thank you best of luck and stay healthy thank you and brannis will be back with some spotlight politics in just a bit yeah paris impressive work iman is doing out there thank you